the city is coming into view. The Andes Mountains are on the left, and beyond the ocean up ahead is Antarctica. This is Ushuaia, the world's southernmost city. It's 3,000 kilometers south of Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. The population here is around 70,000. Wow, what an incredible view. The city is located between a steep mountain range and the ocean. Hello, good morning. I bet it's a mother and her son out for their morning stroll. Goodbye. And now, I'm going to begin exploring the city. Good morning. Whoa. The Andes Mountains are so stunning. Let me take a look at the map. Ushuaia is located between the mountains and the ocean, and I am right here. First, I'm going to head over to the city's main thoroughfare, Avenida San Martín. Let me see. This looks like Avenida San Martín. And there are shops lining both sides of the street. that orange thing on the street? Oh, it's a street stall. For popcorn, maybe. Hi there. Must be quite a breeze. The flags on the other side of the road are flapping in the wind. Check out the store display windows on the left. Very cute. And more penguins wearing t-shirts. I guess it's because the city is so close to Antarctica. And these penguins, mother and child welcoming us to the store? It's a dog. Huh, all alone. Are you lost? He has a collar, so there must be an owner around. He seems okay. Oh, uh, hello. Good morning. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but there is a dog wandering around. He seems to be looking for his owner. It's normal acá. Huh? It's normal los perros dando vueltas. Really, it's common. Why? Enjoy the streets? <laughs> <laughs> so they go out for walks when they feel like it, and everyone feeds them. They must be happy dogs. <laughs> Feeding the dogs. The people here are really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, they seem to feel safe. The dog I saw didn't even growl at me. Thanks for your time. I will. See ya. Ushuaia seems to be a city of kind-hearted people. It's a place where dogs are free to roam safely. And now, I'm off the main street. Oh, look at this building. Wood and glass doors and windows.
a whiff of days gone by. I wonder what this building is. Hello. Hey, could you spare a minute? Hey. What is this building? A cafe. Oh, a cafe. Then it's okay if I go in? See. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Great atmosphere. Huh. Look at all the antiques on the shelves. This man must be the owner. Hello. Hola. Hola. What a great cafe. Muy antiguo, muy antiguo, sí. Histórico. Oh, really? So, when was it built? This edifice was construction del año 1906. Wow, that's more than a hundred years ago. Has it always been a cafe? No, esto no fue un café, fue una casa primero. Luego el señor Salomón llegó acá en el año 1913 y puso en funcionamiento porque era comerciante este negocio que atendía a los barcos y a la población. Sailors and residents. Okay. And you inherited the store? Sí, efectivamente. Yo lo convertí en un café, en un bar, en un restaurante, en un museo. Eh, por los objetos antiguos que tenía el lugar, o sea, pude aprovechar eso. I see. Era un sueño que tenía el construir este lugar. What a great dream. So, what kind of things were here? Como ejemplo. Yes. Esto es un eh, tostador de pan. A toaster. Muy antiguo de la década próxima del. Entre 40 y 50. Oh. Se ponía una, un pedazo de pan. I see. Y acá tiene una resistencia eléctrica con que se inflama, se pone roja y todo está el pan de ambos lados. A simple appliance, but an appliance enjoyed by all. And what's that? Esto, esto es una plancha de cama. A bed warmer? Es una plancha de cama. Aquí dentro se ponían las brasas del fuego, de la leña, del carbón. Se ponía dentro. Mm -hmm. Se bajaba. Y se calentaba la cama. Huh. Para dormir, que hacía mucho frío en Ushuaia. Of course. I mean, the city is so far south. The winters must be very cold. A great way to warm beds. Life must have been harsh in the old days. Sí, era era una vida muy sacrificada, muy sacrificada. Costaba mucho, todo costaba mucho. Había que tener todo en barco. No no había otro medio de comunicación con tierra de fuego no fuera el mar. Si no tardaban 40 40 días entre barco y barco. Only once every 40 days. That must have been inconvenient. It seems that these appliances were taken care of very well by the city's residents. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Gracias. Chao, chao. Disfruten Ushuaia, por favor. Sure. Adios. Adios. So, life in the old days was harsh in the world's southernmost city. Nice. I feel like I've experienced a bit of life in the old days. I think I'll head towards the mountains. Every time I look at the Andes Mountains, I feel incredible awe. Both the snow on the mountains and the clouds in the sky are pure white. That flag is fluttering too. This is a very windy city. Huh, I hear music. I wonder where that's coming from.
It's live, I think. Ah, I bet it's those people there. Another dog. Ah. Uh, hello. Excuse me. Really nice music. Why are you playing here? Eh, bueno, ensayamos. Cuando el día está lindo, venimos a tocar un rato. Practicing. Hacemos la perra y disfrutamos el tango. The tango. Somos amigos hace muchos años y nos gusta el tango. El tango es de Buenos Aires. Somos de Buenos Aires y lo traemos adentro. Así que por eso. Lo sacamos afuera con los instrumentos. <laughs> You're both from Buenos Aires? What brought you here to Ushuaia? It's so far away. A trabajar, a trabajar. For work? Toda, toda la gente que viene a Ushuaia viene por trabajo. Porque uno busca trabajar para su familia. Y este, como el hombre en la prehistoria que busca el dinosaurio, y así se va mudando de continente a continente, nosotros venimos acá por trabajo. Y ya nos quedamos. Y acá nos conocimos y tenemos amigos y así la vida transcurre, ¿no? Con nuestra casa, nuestra... formamos una familia. Entonces, eh, es lo que a veces busca uno, un lugar donde... A place to call home. Donde encontrar, donde estar. Y un lugar en el mundo, le dice. Sí, sí. Un lugar en el mundo. Y parece que lo hemos conseguido nosotros. Claro, no nos no. queremos ir de acá. So you feel at home in Ushuaia. What do you like about this city? No sé. Una ciudad, una ciudad chica se comprende mejor entre todos. Claro. Se, 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 hace, se hace muy amiga. No hay tanto, tanta dispersión como en una ciudad grande. Aquí claro. es, es diferente. So, nos conocemos todos, el de enfrente, el de arriba, el de abajo. Sí. Todos sabemos o escuchamos a alguien que habla de alguien. <laughs> si algo te sucede acá, sí, vienen los vecinos y te ayudan. Everyone here is kind-hearted. Con los mar, eh, con este libertango. The tango. Well, thank you for the great music and interesting conversation. Bye. It seems that people come here looking for work and a place they can call home. That's why they're so considerate of each other. Would you like to know how Ushuaia, the southernmost city in the world, came to be? Hi, I'm Joaquin, a museum guide. Today, I'm going to tell you the unique history of this city. Ushuaia is the world's closest city to Antarctica. Strong winds from the Andes mountain range blow through this city daily. The first people to arrive were the Yagans, a nomadic tribe who traveled here from the Eurasian continent about 10,000 years ago. Forest dwellers, they developed a unique culture and lived in harmony with nature. They hunted seals and gathered clams. The next to arrive were the Europeans. The British battleship HMS Beagle came to survey the coastline here in the first half of the 19th century. They discovered a quiet strait at the tip of the South American continent. Then the traders and missionaries followed and the city of Ushuaia was born. The strait is now called the Beagle Channel. Worth noting is that Charles Darwin, who later advocated the evolutionary theory, was on board the HMS Beagle. The lifestyle of the Yagan people and the natural ecosystem he observed here is said to have greatly influenced his evolutionary theory. Next to arrive in Ushuaia were prisoners. In the late 19th century, the Argentine government gained territorial rights to the area and built a large-scale prison here. 
3,000 kilometers away from Buenos Aires, this location was ideal for a penal colony. Over 600 prisoners cut lumber in the forests to build ports and roadways. They were the ones who established the basic structure of the city. Later, as settlers from the various parts of Argentina increased, the prison was closed, and by the mid-20th century, the city's population had grown to 3,000. Ushuaia underwent another major change in the 1970s. It was designated as an industrial zone to support the Argentine economy. In order to revitalize remote regions of the country, the government set up a duty-free industrial zone outside the city, and a lot of manufacturers moved in. People seeking work moved here from all over South America. During a 50-year span, the city's population increased by more than 20 times what it was. It also started to attract tourists from around the world. This city, on the southernmost tip of the South American continent, has become a prized destination for backpackers. While their reasons and motives may vary, the people who have moved here all live in close harmony. I urge you to visit Ushuaia, the southernmost city. Adios! The time is 1 p.m. That snow-capped mountain straight ahead looks so sharp and elegant. Really fabulous. What? It's a motorcycle. Now that is a big bike. There's another big one next to it. Oh, hi. Bien, bien, bien. That's a nice machine you've got. Oh, gracias, muchas gracias. So, how long have you been traveling? I mean, how far have you come on your bike? Oh, the Estados Unidos. What? From the United States? From the New York. From New York? Oh, yeah. Look, it says New York. That other man, too? Oh, sí, él también viene de the Estados Unidos. I see. Wow. There are a lot of boxes on your bike. Hola. Hi. So where in the U.S. are you from? New York? Vengo de Alaska. What? From Alaska? Más del norte, sí, norte, Puerto Bay, todo Alaska, todo por centro, Canadá, Centro America, y ahora Suaya. Wow. So how long did it take? Uh, it took it took me 97 days. More than three months. 97 days, uh, 16,800 miles. That's about 27,000 kilometers. Wow. You had a really long trip. Yeah, sometimes the, the long days, sometimes the road, um, sometimes just the potholes, you know, the construction, the animals. Animals? <laughs> I can go on. I've had pigs. I've had dogs chase me. I have pigs cross the road. I've had horses on the road. Very, very fun trip. You've taken on quite a challenge. Lots of obstacles, it seems like. Pretty hard. Yeah, there, there's a few. There's a few. It, it takes time. It takes time and money away from the family. Yeah. But when you have, when you have a bucket list, this, this was my, my dream, to do this. I've been thinking about it for uh, about 20 years. 20 years? And your family's OK with it? Um, yes, because I, I can't tell my kids to follow their dreams and I'm not following my dreams, so I can't be a hypocrite. Right. So my wife is very understanding. She's like, hey, you want to do it? It's your dream. It's dangerous, but go. You have a great family. Is Ushuaia your final goal? Yes. Yeah, th this was the ultimate, the ultimate goal was to get to Ushuaia. And yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It is, isn't it? So, with your family supporting you, you've realized your dream to cross two continents. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> Have much. Have a safe Bye. trip. Bye. So, if the father is allowed to follow his dream, then the kids are encouraged to follow theirs, too. Beautiful. Oh, more dogs. A lot of them. A lot of dogs. Oh, the sky is getting dark. Looks like rain.
He seems to be in a hurry to get home. What's that he's holding in his hand? Hi, what have you got in your hand? Water Huh? Water rushes? What for? Para hacerse juncos. Baskets? Whoa. Okay, so you're going to weave a basket with them? Sí. Would you show me how you do that? Sí, pasen, pasen. Great, thanks. Hey, wait for me. This is a house, right? Huh. Yummy. There are other kids here. Oh, hello. A group of kids. Ah, it's a basket weaving class. And this man seems to be the teacher. <laughs> These kids seem to be very serious about this. Huh, a cockroach? Let me see it. I don't think so. It's nicely done. So, uh, could I ask you a question? Is basket weaving a tradition? Sí, sí, miles de años. Seis mil quinientos años se hacían las cestas. Six thousand five hundred years? Really? Ah. Para almacenar los alimentos y llevarlos, como una bolsa, ¿no? Entonces había que hacer... I see. Seems to be sturdy. Sixty five hundred years means from the days of the Yagan. Esta es la cultura Yagan. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I see. You're teaching traditional Yagan crafts to the kids. That's great. Bueno, si me acompañan, podemos venir por acá. Okay. What's in there? What are those? Estas son máscaras ceremoniales de nuestro pueblo, las ceremonias de iniciación, Che House y Kina del pueblo Yagan. Yagan masks. Y bueno, se las ponían. Oh. Es la cáscara que envuelve el árbol y el siempre verde, el que no le cae la hoja, de hoja perennes, digamos, este, se llama coihue o guindo. Wow, it's very solid. These age-old traditions are important to you. Y nosotros el mensaje más que nada es acercarse a la naturaleza, poder este, eh, tratar de vivir juntos. El llamado de los, de los ancestros nos ha llegado en algún momento y... Y, y creemos que, que es necesario. Eh, vivimos para, para, para poder rescatar lo nuestro y para poder reivindicar los pueblos originarios. Yes, a responsibility. Hey, kids, make good baskets, okay? Ciao. See you. Ciao. <laughs> they are so full of energy. Ciao. <laughs> The spirit and traditions of the people who came to live in Ushuaia so long ago continue to be passed on to the residents of the city. Hello, I'm Kati, a lover of fencing and good eating. Today I have some Ushuaia cuisine that I want to recommend to you. So, follow my fencing sword. The food here in the southernmost city is quite wild. I'll start with the restaurant over there. In third place is Merluza Negra. Do you want to know what it is? 
Look, it's this huge black fish that lives deep in the ocean near Antarctica. Its face may be a bit frightening, but it tastes great. First, it's sliced into large pieces. Then it's salted and broiled. Oh yeah, Merlusa Negra is exported to Japan with the name Metal. Its meat is nice and fatty. It looks so good. Mmm, so soft it melts in your mouth. Our next stop is over here. In second place is asado de cordero, flame roasted lamb. The sheep are pasture grown and plump. They're split open and salted. Then they're roasted for over two hours. This eliminates the excess fat and makes the meat tender and flavorful. After roasting, the meat is chopped up and it's ready to eat. Mmm, it smells so good. I can't wait. Here I go. Mmm, it's tender and juicy. Perfect. Now for my final recommendation. Oh, I've got a bite. It's pulling hard. I've landed one. In first... When you come to Usaya, be sure and try our amazing food. I'm so full. Back to fencing. Ready, strike. Ready, strike. Ah, another dog. Going home after a day on the town? The time is 3 p.m. Oh, it's getting cloudy again. Time to check the map. I watched children weave baskets, then walked a bit, and now I'm here. I've come quite uphill. Oh, a stairway. It goes up for a long way. I think I'll climb it and see what's up there. The steps are made of wood. I feel like I'm in a forest tunnel. It feels so nice. Ah, it's a road. So the stairway leads to this road. And the sun is out again. The weather is always changing here. Huh. There are some people on that terrace. Hello? It's clearing up. That sounds nice. Oh, really? Well, that would be great. Thanks. Thank you. Whew. Uh, hello. 
Buenas. 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 Nice Buenas. to meet you. Thank you for inviting me. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. What a great view. Um, sí. Está Iván, que es el mayor, Daira, que es la menor, y bueno, Dora. Nice to know you. Are you natives of Ushuaia? No, no. no. Eh, él es de Misiones, de Corpus, y yo soy de Paraguay. Far from here. Y nuestros hijos sí son jueguinos ya. Oh, so your children are natives. Nacido acá en la ciudad. You came here for work? Básicamente por tema de trabajo. Por el tema de trabajo. No, era una provincia nueva que iba creciendo. Había fuente de, había una industria y y aprovechamos eso que éramos jóvenes y bueno, no no vinimos para el sur. Looking for chances. Y bueno, eh, empecé a trabajar. Y al poco tiempo le conocí a Osvaldo y nos casamos. Estuvimos un mes de novia y después nos casamos. Y toda la lotería. <laughs> the right man. I see. Good for you. You found a good partner. That's great. And then you were able to buy this nice house up here in the hills. Y construyendo. Oh, you built it yourselves? Empezaste a construir acá en qué fecha? En el 94, a los tres meses que llegué, empecé a... Vine acá a este terreno y empecé a construir. De a poco. Mm -hmm. No había nada, era todo campo acá. Todo oh, campo. so you cleared the land. And the two of you built this house. Huh. Wow, that's impressive. May I look inside? Sí. Great. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Hello. Nice. It's so spacious. It has a really warm appeal. Costó mucho hacerlo. Fuimos haciendo the house during construction? Oh, I see. Is this you? Right. There was nothing here. And you built the house from the ground up. There were no roads then. Pero sí, al principio costó mucho porque no teníamos servicio. No teníamos agua potable ni gas. Wow, that is a lot of work. And so you both worked on it? Sí, también. Eh, con la panza y todo, que el, el embarazo. What? Salía igual afuera a ayudarle a, a sostener las cosas, a medir, a cortar, o inclusive muchas veces también a, a levantar cosas. Amazing. Sí o sí tenía que, o sea, acá es para progresar hay que trabajar los dos siempre. You work together to move things forward. Well, thank you so much. Pase, pase. Hmm. Okay. Acá podemos ver la mejor vista que tenemos nosotros acá de de la casa, que es todo el Wow, you are right. The city of Ushuaia, the Beagle Channel, and the Andes Mountains. Camilo, no puedo creer que que estoy acá. Es es como un sueño. Wow. Thank you for your hospitality. Bye bye. Adios. Thank you. Stay safe and well. They came from far away, made a family, 
and work together to obtain this spectacular view. Wow, that is great. I'm back from the hills and close to the coast now. I see a lot of large boats off the coast. Wow, look at all those cruise ships. Some heavy luggage. Oh, more people. Okay, what is going on here? Is this a tour? Good day. Hello. Hello. May I ask where you're going? We're about to join a cruise. A cruise? On the Ocean Endeavour, one of those ships. And your destination? Malvinas, South Georgia, and the Antarctic Peninsula. Uh -huh. 20, about 20 days, 19 days. We booked our uh, place on the ship 18 months ago. Long time ago. 18 months ago? So we've been looking forward to it long time. So this is your long-awaited trip? What are you looking forward to the most? Lots of birds, lots of penguins. I don't think there'll be a lot of whales <laughs> but this time. But, uh -huh. but uh, yeah, the glaciers. Uh, iceberg, beautiful iceberg. Ooh, that sounds nice. It's a dream. It's a dream I've had for many years. A dream. And finally, we're going to get there. Oh. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Have a safe trip. I see. A couple's long-time dream is finally coming true. Ushuaia is a place where various dreams come true, I guess. It's time for a refreshing side trip. The destination is not quite Antarctica, but it is a penguin paradise. Let's see, which one is my boat? Hi, I'm doing fine. Um, I'm looking for the boat for the penguin's island. This one, great, thanks. Oh, hi. Hello. Is she the guide? Oh, everyone's on board already. Nice to meet you. The Penguin's Paradise is on Isla Matillo, off the coast of Ushuaia. I hear more than 10,000 Magellanic penguins dwell there. I'm so excited. Oh, this must be the Beagle Channel. It's so marvelous. This same view was enjoyed by Charles Darwin 200 years ago. We're approaching an island. Penguin's Island? That shape and that gate, a penguin. Here we are. There they are. So these are the Magellanic penguins. They're adorable. They're all lying on their bellies. Are they warming themselves? These ones are lying down to take photos. Wow, they're swimming. Are they taking their baths? It's so interesting to see how they roll around. Ahora sí, sigamos. Oh, where are we going? Now we are going to visit the nest area of the Magellanic family. The nest area? They make nests. There they are. It's great to be able to watch penguins up close like this. They're blinking their eyes. So adorable. That kind of penguins make their nest inside the soil. 
There are some uh, couples that have uh, their ticks. I see. They dig pits in the ground. Oh, I found one inside. This is how they live. Look at this nest. There are chicks under its belly. They're so small and cute. Why do the penguins dig nests in the ground to live? Para poder tener eh, los huevos protegidos de sus depredadores. Hay un ave que se llama escúa que es, se come los huevos y los pichones de los pingüinos magallánicos. To protect the chicks from predators. Ah, uh, the second one from the left is bellowing at the sky. Maybe it's trying to intimidate predators. The two over there, they're larger than the other penguins, and they have yellow necks. El rey es el que tiene como dos auriculares amarillos, son esos dos más altos y llegan a medir un metro diez. Those are king penguins. I see. They're aptly named. They look very noble standing upright like that. They're puffing themselves up. Just watching the penguins has a healing effect. And I was able to get just a little taste of the Antarctic. It's 7 p.m. now, and the sky is still blue. Let me look at my map. I visited the family who live on the hill, then went back to the port to meet people taking a cruise, and now I'm back here in a residential area. The Andes range at dusk looks quite exquisite, covered in pure white snow. That man is holding something. Hola. Hola. Good evening. What are you holding? Esto es una dama Juana de vino. Aquí adentro hay vino. Para Why? tomar. Justamente voy a la casa de un amigo a comer un asado. Nos tomamos vino y comemos un asado. I see. Barbecue and wine. Sounds nice. ¿Les gusta? ¿Han probado asado? ¿Has probado asado alguna vez? What? Is it okay to barge in like that? Really? Sí. ¿Quieres probar? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Wow, how lucky I am. This is the house? Buenas, buenas. Wow, what a grand looking chimney. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Nice to meet you. That's the wine, and there's plenty of it. Salud. 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 Of course. And you are. Soy el dueño de casa. Y el asador oficial. Ah, the master of the house is the barbecue master. Wearing an apron, too. El resto de la comida es. Oh, sí, la mujer cocina. Pero el asado es, el asado es típico del, del hombre. A man's job. Huh. Whoa, he is roasting away. Ah, 
It looks so good. Ah, it's done. What is this? Beef ribs. Oh, that looks really delicious. How does it taste? I bet it does. You know, the way you guys treat each other, you seem like family. Thirty years. That's a great relationship. Did you all move here from somewhere else? Mm -hmm. A lot of people come here from other places and they choose to stay. Aha, the magic of Ushuaia. What do you mean? Esa es la magia de Ushuaia. No se puede explicar, pero mucha gente viene, capaz no sabe por qué se queda aquí, pero le gusta. Mm -hmm. Fall under its spell. Quizás es la nieve. Yo pienso eso, que es como algo blanco, que es como un lienzo blanco para que ellos pongan sus sueños, sus esperanzas y la gran mayoría de la gente lo cumple. Mm -hmm. Por eso se quedan, por eso ha crecido tanto en la ciudad. A magic city where dreams and hopes come true. What a great city to live in. Thanks for having me. Adios. Gracias. Gracias. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thanks again. They look so happy and so warm. Okay, I've returned to Avenida San Martín, the main street, and it's bustling with people. The magic of Ushuaia that enchants everyone who comes here. I totally understand about that magic now. shall I paint on that white canvas of the Andes? <laughs> <laughs>